Hi. Um, so I'm gonna continue on with this piece that I started. It's um, it's a Katrina phase for a um, competition uh, at the St. Louis History Museum, and it's probably um, celebrating. Um, it's it's celebrating Dia de los Muertos, which is the Day of the Dead. And a lot of people who know my work, they know that I do a lot of Day of the Dead pieces. So I I, I I'm going to be putting in a couple of pieces three pieces, one of which is this piece right here that I'm working on. Um, this is a pastel on silk, so it's got a different kind of a process than the regular pastel on sanded um, paper, which I have a piece going in, and I also have a piece that is a, um, a controlled pour um, uh, piece, which is up there. So um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm going to be doing. Um, it is Tuesday morning. It's a little junky out, so um, I'm going to enjoy the day just doing some painting. And uh, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the process of how I'm doing this. So I'm gonna talk very briefly about how I'm doing it, and then I'm going to film the, the, the finishing up of this particular piece. So just follow me over there. Okay, so most of the base has been put on at this point. You'll see I've blocked in the flowers and everything. And um, although I'm speeding through this quickly, mostly I just want to talk about the fact that um, this is just a completely different process. It's not using sanded paper. It's not even using pastel paper. It's a fabric. And so the process of the pastel on fabric is very different. It's very delicate. You can't really blend it with the blending tools as much. You can do it in a, in a bigger way. But basically what I do is I put on a fixative. I let it set up and then I can put more on it. And it actually holds it. It's a pretty tight uh, fabric, you can see I'm blending very little there um, with the sponge. But what I use a lot is um, I, I use a spray bottle that has a 50 50 mixture of rubbing alcohol and water. You see, I just sprayed it there. And what that does, it sort of blends it down. And I've already used that on the side, which I, I didn't film that before prior. Um, but as I've added fixative on here, it allows me to change the color in the eyes. And um, what you'll see on the original piece, should you be able to see this original piece, you'll see it almost looks iridescent around the eyes because I have sprayed it with a fixative and then I add colors on top of colors. So I have um, green under there, but then I'll add some blue on there. Her eyes were an auburn color, so I have blue there, but I do also add auburn in it. Um, and as I add the blue on top of the green, it almost looks turquoise. It looks like... Um, peacock feathers um, because it has a really, really interesting coloration. And you can see there's a little red going in there now, but then I'm also going to pop in the blues and I'm going to pop in that orange color. Her eyes are sort of beautiful auburn orange. Um, she has uh, her hair in this particular thing. I've, I've taken some creative license and made her hair sort of bluish, um, like a gray blue. So um, the process in this particular medium with this particular um, paper, if you want to call it, because it is a paper, because it has a backing to it. Um, and it really just gives you a different kind of flexibility with the pastels. Really a lot of fun to mess with. You should always experiment with different types of mediums and different types of um, uh, canvases if you can. But this was a lot of fun to do. Um, if you have a chance to see the original, stop by and check it out. It's at the St. Louis History Museum uh, for Dia de los Mortes. Thanks for watching.